In this video, I want to show you everything there is to know about gas, gas limit, and everything that's surrounding gas in Solidity and Ethereum. I've opened here my Firefox browser. Uh, you can see there is no MetaMask plugin. And I'm here on the remix.ethereum.org website and I have a very simple contract. Now let me explain the contract to you. I'm using the Solidity version 0419 for this contract and I have one unsigned integer 256 called B and I have a function save B and I can just override this storage variable with a new uh, value and that's public. Now let's go over to the run tab. Now, first of all, let's have a look on the top. I have selected the JavaScript virtual machine, so I'm just here in my browser. I have uh, my in-memory blockchain. I have one account and I send along 3 million gas. And now I'm going to create this contract with the create button here. Now my contract instance is here on the bottom and I'm going to save B now with the value 5. As you can see in the log window, there is a few logs popping up and the lowest one is the transact to save B pending and then uh, save B is mined. Now let's have a look at the details from this very specific transaction. And we have three things here. We have the gas, we have the transaction cost and we have the execution cost. These three things is what we're going to talk about in this video. Now the first thing that we have here is the 3 million gas and that's fairly easy to determine where this comes from. It's from over here in the run tab where we set the gas limit and we set it to 3 million. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 and then 3 million. So this is the gas that we send along with the transaction that we are going to send off into this uh, in-memory blockchain simulation. Now the second part is the transaction cost and the third part is the execution cost. Now if we are sending off a transaction, then with the transaction itself there is a cost attached. And I have the white paper here, actually it's the yellow paper uh, from Ethereum and Appendix G, there is a fee schedule. And if we have a look here at the G transaction create, G transaction data zero, G transaction data non zero, and G transaction. So those four are important for us to determine the transaction cost. Now in Remix, the transaction cost is the actual transaction cost plus the execution cost. If we want to determine the real transaction cost, we have to subtract the execution cost from the transaction cost. So let me do this real quickly here. I go and open my calculator and I type in 41642 minus 2178. So we have a real transaction cost of 21464. And now let me note that down. We have 21464. So that's our transaction cost. Okay. Now let's have a look at this transaction cost here in Appendix G. So we have a transaction create, which is paid by all contract creating transactions after the homestead transition. Now this would apply to this transaction where we created the contract, but now we already have the contract created, so we don't have to pay this in the further transactions after the contract is created. Now we have three more. We have the G transaction data zero, paid for every zero byte of data or code for a transaction. Uh, G transaction data non-zero, 68, paid for every non-zero byte of data or code for a transaction. And G transaction, which is 21,000, paid for every transaction. So now let's have a look at the data, the payload that we are going to send off to the network. In our log window here, we can see the input. And the input is this field here. So this is the data that we are sending off to the network. And let's have a look how this is created. The input field is a mix between the actual function call, which is the first four bytes or eight hex characters 
and the 32-byte uh, zero-padded uh, payload for this function argument. Let's calculate this quickly by hand. And that's that's fairly easy to, to do. And it's just a reminder how these things are actually calculated. Let's see the actual function interface. So we are calling a function called save b and this function is taking one unsigned integer 256. uint is just a short version for uint 256. We have this one, let me make this smaller here. One save b and that's a uint 256. This is one argument. And now what we are going to, to do is uh, we take the SHA free 256 uh, of this, or it's also called the, uh, or it's also called the uh, KZAC 256. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. So that is uh, an, an alias. Actually, it's it's a SHA free, which is the Ethereum uh, SHA free. Uh, which is the same as the uh, KZAC 256. So what we want to do is we want to calculate this one. And um, I can do this here in Remix with uh, a little bit of a detour because if I have Remix open and that's uh, something that you can try as well, then the web free object will be attached to the window so we can do a is a new web free and then we have a web free object here and what we can do here is we can calculate the SHA free from save b uint 256 and what we will get is a, a very long uh, hex string hex encoded string and from here we want to take the first four bytes so the first eight characters and that's one two three four five six seven eight that's those ones and if you compare this to the input here then it's the same so this is how uh, solidity how the ethereum virtual machine determines the function call the jump in the assembly to the right function so let me note this down here uh, we have the first four bytes which is eight hex characters and if you remember back one hex character or one hex value can go from zero to f which is each is uh, four bits and one byte is eight bits so two of the hex characters is one byte okay now let's talk about this second uh, value here this is the input argument that we are sending off to the network for changing the value b so we have here our instance of our contract and we call save b with the value 5 and uh, what basically happens internally is that the value 5 itself is not uh, 32 bytes long so it's gonna bat pat this with zeros to make it 32 bytes long so that internally in uh, the ethereum virtual machine assembly it can be decoded again and it will just take the whole string and take this value uh, afterwards so what we have here is 31 zeros followed by one five because the five is essentially uh, the same in, in a hex value five let me note this down too so let's have a look in total so we have uh, one, two, three, four, four non-zero bytes. Then we have uh, 30, 31 zero bytes. Here we have a non-zero. And here we have one non-zero byte. So we have another one non-zero. So this is uh, four times, let's go back to the yellow paper. This is uh, transaction data non-zero, 68. Then we have another one time 68. And then we have 31 
times four. Let's put this together, this, calculate this real quickly. This is four times 68 is 272. This is 68. And this is 124. So that I'm not making any mistakes, let's sum this up plus 68 plus 124 this is in total 464 gas that we are using up for this uh, data field now here in addition to this data field there is the transaction cost paid for every transaction of 21,000 so uh, this is the total data field and this is the total transaction is 21,464 and if we're going back to our calculation here it's 21,464 so this is how uh, Remix or how, is how the Ethereum network calculates the transaction cost now let's go to the execution cost the execution cost is determined by the amount of instructions that Ethereum has to execute in order to save this value B here. And if you go to the debug tab here and we open the instructions, then we can see there are all the instructions that are executed one by one for this contract. And we can also go to the step detail here. Then we see how much gas each of the instruction needs and how much gas is remaining. Now, if you look at this slider here, then we are already at the end. Let's pull that all back together at the very beginning, at the very first instruction. Now here we have a push, then we have another push, then we have an M store, then we have another push, then a call data size, LT push, then a jump E, this costs 10 gas. Then a push one, call data load, push 29, swap one, div, push four, and so on. So if we go back to the to the uh, yellow paper from Ethereum, then we see that we have a G0, a G base, a G very low, low, mid, high, and so on. Uh, also a S load, a jump test, the S set, S reset, and, and a lot of them. So on the bottom, you see which of the actual assembly uh, instructions is assigned to which amount of gas so stop and return take zero gas then address origin caller call value call data size and so on will take the base gas and if you look here base takes two gas then very low is add sub not uh, LT GT SLT SGT and so on push dub swap is very low so that takes up Three gas each. Then we have uh, low uh, mod diff, s diff, mod s mod, seek n extend, add mod, mar mod, jump, jump e is high, and then x code size. Now it's very, uh, it's not really handy to calculate the gas like this. So someone went along and created this spreadsheet here. You can find the link in the description, and you can see all of the uh instructions the assembly instructions and you can see how much gas they use and you can see that for some there's a formula so for example s store is a formula that says let me go to this cell here uh, 20,000 is paid when storage value is set to non-zero from zero. 5,000 is paid when the storage value zeroness remains unchanged or is set to zero so if we write this the first time when it's zero or zero before and all the values are initialized with zero at the very beginning, uh, now it's non-zero anymore. So we have to pay 20,000 gas for this. Let's have a look at our debugger here and we go all the way through all of these instructions. You can see that we reach at some point, we reach S store. So one thing that I found with this debugger 
uh, especially in Remix, is that it doesn't show me the right values, uh, especially for gas. So for example, here the gas is zero. So one thing that I did is I copied all the instructions here into a text file. Let me pull up here a new text file. And then I went ahead and I had a look if the instructions really add up with the gas. So I went in and I had a look at all the instructions here. Uh, push one, push one, M store. Then I, I copied all of them over into a text file. I assigned the correct gas value taken from this uh, Excel spreadsheet and double confirmed it with the yellow paper from Ethereum. And then I basically added them all up. Now, what I found was that it doesn't add up. It's exactly nine gas off, plus the S store value, which is shown here in this Excel spreadsheet and in the yellow paper, uh, also written down that S store takes up 20,000 gas, is shown as zero here in the uh, Remix debugger. Let's go there to the S store again. So it's, it shows up zero here, which is definitely wrong. Now, even though I compare them all, they don't add up. So there is exactly nine gas missing. So I was curious why there is nine gas missing. So what, what happened is that instead of uh, the 20,178, so instead of 20,178, we had 20,169 gas after adding everything up. Now, obviously, either my calculation is wrong or Remix is wrong. So I opened my Chrome browser. I, I copied the exactly same contract there, but in, instead of running it with the internal JavaScript virtual machine, I used the injected web free via MetaMask. And in my MetaMask, I am on the Rinky B test network. And then I did exactly the same. First, I published the contract and then I executed the exactly same save B function. And now I went to Etherscan and had a look and the gas is exactly the same gas that was used up. But uh, Etherscan has also a very nice function, which is here in Tools and Utilities. You can take the Remix debugger and you have basically the same debugger step by step and you can see the step details. And what you can see here is that M store takes up 12 gas and I couldn't figure out why. It just didn't make any sense. Uh, and this is why I posted an issue with uh, the browser solidity community. I haven't had an answer yet, but basically I, I couldn't figure out why. So if you have any answer to that, it would be nice if you can leave me an answer or just tell me what I did wrong in the comments. And also here what you can see is that actually the Remix debugger in Etherscan shows you the right value for S store. So it seems like there is two different debugger versions. Uh, one is for the uh, one is for outside the outside world here in Etherscan and one is used within Remix in the debugger section. Now the final conclusion, uh, you know now where the gas is coming from. So that's the value that we are sending along. It's the gas limit here. You know the transaction cost and you know the execution cost. Now, let's talk about the gas price because there is a huge misunderstanding between the gas limit and the gas price. Now, the gas limit is used to, to let the contract run uh, a certain amount of instructions and not more. So, for example, you have a while uh, loop or you have a for loop or you have something that doesn't end, maybe an infinity, infinity uh, recursive call or something then it will just stop at a certain time because it will run out of gas and you will get an exception. Now let's try this. Instead of using uh, uh, 41,642 gas, first of all, let's create a new contract instance. And instead of uh, 41,642, we use 41,641 and we try to assign the same value 5 and it will not uh, 
it will not mind this transaction, it will throw an error, it will say uh, transaction to a save b error, virtual machine error out of gas. So we run out of gas. That's the whole point of the gas limit to have an upper boundary, how much instructions you can execute before you run out of gas and so that the miners are not running in an infinitive loop and you cannot DDoS the network. Now what about the gas price? Now if you are uh, really publishing this contract to the network and I uh, use here Injected Web 3 with MetaMask and I try to create this very same contract again. Let me reload this page here one more time. So I have my account here from MetaMask and I try to create this contract and what you can see here that there is a MetaMask notification popping up. And there is a, a the gas limit, which is the calculated uh, estimated gas for this contract creation for this single transaction. Obviously, this, this gas limit is different than the one we had before because this is the contract creation, not not assigning the value of five. But there is also the gas price, and the gas price is here in gray, which is for each of the gas units that are used up you pay a certain amount of ether, or in this case, uh, gray. And it tells you the maximum transaction fee. So if all of the gas is used up, then it will cost you around one US dollar 25. In our case, it costs nothing because we're on the Rinky B test network. But if we would be on the normal network, then it would cost us one dollar 25 to execute this transaction. Now I can also lower this. So you can see that uh, the transaction, the maximum transaction fee goes down. Now, if you pay 20 gray to the network and the contract uses 93,692 units of gas, then it will cost you $1.25 or 0.001873 ether. Now you can also give more units of gas. Like for example, I could just add here another zero then it will tell me the maximum transaction fee is $2.58 or 0.003874 for Ether. Now, if our contract would use up all the gas, it would cost this much because each of the gas costs 20 gray. But if our contract uses less gas than we are setting the limit for, then the rest of the gas will be refunded to us, which is the difference between the price and the limit. The limit tells the miner there is a certain amount of gas it can use up, a certain amount of instructions it can run. But the gas price will stay exactly at the price we give it. So if it uses 5 or if it uses 10 units of gas, then it will cost us 200 gray to run this transaction. If we give it 1 million units of gas limit and it only costs 10 gas to run this contract, then 999,990 will be returned to us, but the, the 10 will be used up. So this is the difference between the gas limit and the gas price. The gas price furthermore usually determines how fast the transaction is actually mined, because when the miner uh, receives this transaction request, and there is usually more than one transaction request per block, then it will sort all these transaction requests uh, by the gas price paid and usually works on the transactions first that have a, a higher gas price because it brings more money to the miner. There is not always a necessity for pay paying a high amount of gas price, especially when the network is not congested. This is where, for example, uh, pages like the uh, Ether gas station, ETH gas station, uh, fgasstation.info uh, comes in place. And what we can see here that if we are paying less than one gas, then we have uh, a medium time to confirmation of 41 minutes. But if we are paying only one gas, uh, one grape for each gas, then we have to wait usually 2.6 minutes. And if you're paying five gray, we have to wait 1.4 minutes. And if you're paying six gray, then we have to wait 0 0.6 minutes. And this doesn't go down a lot more. So it's like 
with 9 gray we are going to 0 0.3 minutes with 10 we are having 0 0.4 and that's that's the medium the median uh, time to confirmation this is why it, it maybe goes up and down a little bit um, but you can see that the top 10 miners by blocks mined that the lowest gas price is set maybe to one or four and uh, you can see that you don't always have to pay 20 gray to send off a transaction. Uh, let me go back to my Chrome browser here and let's create the very same contract again. And let's try what happens if you are paying only uh, 4 gray. Let me check this and now let's see what happens, how long it's gonna take until this block is mined with four gray instead of 20 uh, and this is on the RinkyB test network so on the live main network it might be different but I'm gonna pause the video now and I'm gonna start the video again when the block is successfully mined and I will show you how long it took in when it took four gray instead of 20 gray. Now it took roughly 20 seconds to actually mine this block. And this is uh, now at a time where the network is not congested, especially not the RinkyB test network. But you can see you can save a lot of money by adjusting the gas price if you are not urgently needing the transaction to be mined. So that can save you quite a lot of money uh, if you have a lot of gas that is used up by a contract, for example. Now, obviously, if the network is congested, and you want your transactions to go through faster, then you have to increase the gas price. Uh, and that's actually a problem uh, now that a lot of ICOs are taking place or the CryptoKitties contract that the network got congested and people paid uh, quite remarkable amounts of, of Ether for uh, getting their transactions through. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me point you also to my blog if you haven't noticed, uh, fomtom.at, because I'm from Austria and I'm also giving video courses. So you might want to join one of those if you enjoyed this video or you want to hit the subscribe button here. And once I have new uh, Ethereum sessions online, I usually send out an email or you just want to subscribe to my YouTube channel and thanks for watching and I hope I see you in the next videos again.